As the President of the Court, we still appear for the State with Ms. Marandeza. May I please, Jim Maluda, I appear for the first, second, and third applicants here. May I please, my Lord, I'm still for the fourth applicant as before. There's the court, please, my Lord, for five and six, respectively. Mr. Kanyangela, you are, you are still under oath. Yes, my lord. I remind you that you are still under oath. All right. Um, you have page 67. Is it as it is the court? Is it um, exhibit X? Is it exhibit X, Mr. Um, like Z. Z? Z. The bigger bundle. You were at page 67 yesterday of the bundle of exhibits. Yes, Are you there? Page 67, I was not having it. Oh, you were not? It's the page I was not having. Oh, okay. Six, seven. Yes, Your Lordship. Exhibit H. Um, do you recall that page? Yes, I recall the page. Okay. Now, from your investigations, have you established as to what was the reason provided for the payment to uh, the law firm Sisa Namanje Company Incorporated? Yes, per our investigation, we... We obtained a statement from Mr. Paulus Ngalangi. He's a general manager of finance of Seaflower, which is a subsidiary of Fishcorp. And according to him, the information that was provided to him by Mr. Mike Mipunya was that this payment is with, with regard to government objectives. Oh, okay. And if we move on to page 68, what is reflected on that page? On page 68, it's a periodic statement. It's a document that we obtained from Fishco or from Seaflower on the account of the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia. Okay. And is there any particular transaction of interest reflected on that document? Okay, there's a transaction of the 1st of December 2015 with the description Sisa Namanje and Co. INC Trust. Then in brackets CHK, which is an account number. One double zero triple zero one two nine seven. And in the debit, 
column, we foresee a debit of 15 million. Oh, okay. Uh, Miloshi, the third request for the statement to be marked as an exhibit. Which one? Um, the one at page six, 68. One at 67 is already marked as exhibit H. Oh, it's already in. Okay. Yes, Miloshi. Right. So the state request for the one at page 68 to be marked as an exhibit. It will be Z. Z13? Does it please the court? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. I just want to verify from my exhibit. Mm -hmm. my, my record shows Z12 right. is the last exhibit. Um, I have Z13 as the user's agreement at page 53. Which page? Uh, 53. Yeah, you are right. Page 50. Then it's Z40. Exhibit Z40. As it is a court. All right. Um, from your investigations, have you established whether or not this 15 million, which was paid um, to Sisana Manjian Company Incorporated, utilized for governmental objectives? So our, the outcome of our investigation, it came to light that this amount was not used for governmental objectives. Mm -hmm. In the sense that when we realized there were such payments made into the account of Mr. Sisa Namanje and company trust, we follow up the transactions from that account and we will see that there were some payments that were made to the account of an entity. We found, we found that there was money paid to the account of Mr. Vainok Nipondoka. We also found that there was money paid out to Mr. Armas Amkwil. During the investigation, we approached these people, this is Mr. Namanje, it's Mr. Vaino, it's Mr. Armas, and Mr. I think it's Bonderstein. To explain as to why they receive money from Mr. Namanje's account. The explanation of Mr. Vaino Nipondoka was that. At one time, Mr. James Atukuripi approached him to borrow him money. And he indicated that he borrowed him an amount of 6,500,000 Namibian dollars. Such borrowing was confirmed in the bank, state, in the bank statements that indeed Mr. James Hatwikulipi received such money. And when we interview Mr. Alma Samkiu, okay, before we go to Mr. Alma Samkiu, Mr. Nipondoka also indicated that he was informed by Mr. James Atwikulipi that he will get his money back through a lawyer's account. Then at one point, Mr. James Atwikulipi 
enter into a discussion with Mr. Arma Samkwil, whereby he indicated that he wants to make some payments as a donation to the Swapo Party. And he instructed that they must get a lawyer through him, through the Elias account, through which he have to pay the money. That is how the money, the trust account of Mr. Sisa Namanje came into. They give that the account for the money to be transferred into Sisa to Mr. Sisa Namanje's account. So let, let me just understand it. Um, you are saying with Mr. Amkuyu. Yes. Mr. Amkuyu told you that James approached him. Yes. And said James wants to make a donation. Yes. James in his personal capacity. Yes, correct. My wants Lord. to make a donation. Yes, but yes, my lord. And that donation, James wants to make, he wants to make it to the Swapo party. Yes, correct, my lord. And that Armas must receive the donation on behalf of the Swapo party. Yes, correct, my lord. All right. And from your investigation, this entire 15 million, um, what was it utilized for? Okay, the 15 million. Mr. bit. I'm sorry to. Uh, I thought the witness was, he said he approached four people Mr. Venom Hipondoka, uh -huh. Mr. Arma Samukuyu, Mr. Sisa Namanje, uh -huh. and Mr. Bond Bondlestein. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. if you can just tell the court what all these four individuals told him why they received the money. As it pays the court, Mr. Okay, Mr. Bondostein, I think is they are conveyances, conveyances, something like that. His explanation is that he was handling a purchasing of the farm of Mr. Vaino in Pondoka. In the money that you receive, which was in the amount, I think it's 2.1 million, was for the payment of that farm. Uh, Mr. Vaino Nipondoka also gave an explanation to that money, where he indicated that this 2.1 million, 2 .1 million it was given to him, or it was paid for him on top of the loan, or on top of the money borrowed, just as a token of appreciation. Mr. Namanje, we approached him. So, so, Mr. Nipondoka, in effect, received 8.6 million and not 6.5 million that you are. On top of the 6.5, there was another 2.1. Yes. Oh, which was paid to burden the stain, but on behalf of Mr. Nipondoka. That's correct, my lord. <laughs> Mr. Namanja, we approached him. He confirmed that yes, indeed, he was approached by Mr. Armas Ankyu and Mr. Vaino Nipondoka for their money to be received through his trust account. And when the money came in, According to him, these people came to, to him or to his business. They opened a file 
with regard to this money. And thereafter, payments were made out to Mr. Armas, to Mr. James Atikulipi, and to Bundelstein, which left, left a total amount of 60,000 Namibian dollars in his account, in his trust account, from that money, which he explained as to be of the service he rendered in the bank charges. And Mr. Armas, I think he testified on that at the beginning. Yeah, he, with Mr. Armas, he did testify. Yes, it was. It was just Bundlestein and Mr. Namanje that I. Yes, a lot. Yes. As it is, of course. Maybe just to add something on it. Before this money was paid to Mr. Namanje, there was also a time <coughs> Mr. Armas borrowed money from Mr. Nipondoka to finance a vehicle through Novel Fort. That vehicle was also in the range of more than one million. And when, he is, when Mr. Vainok Ipondoka received the money from Sisa Namanja's account, that transaction was also included of the money he borrowed Mr. Armas and crew. All right. We've heard in this court from Mr. Nipunya that the funds that were paid to DHC were for governmental objectives. Um, I just want to take you to page 448 of this bundle. Is it 448 at the top or at the bottom? Um, at the bottom, Your Lordship. At the bottom? Yes, Your Lordship. seem to find it? Um, Your Lordship, just after four, there's one which is only marked 447 by itself. And it should just follow that. It's towards the very end of the, the file. Or, or the top right page the one under 384. The, on top? Yes, at the, at the top right page. 384. Yes, it's written 384, but under it there's 448. My top 384. Um, 
doesn't have it's it's it, it's a document like this. That's a three eight four. Um, your lordship, let me just see. Um, is the court in possession of an affidavit by Mr. Thompson at Willipi? Does the court have page 447 of the bundle? There's 446, 447. My last pages end at the, the, the data number. It's the end at 350. 350. Yeah, and then from there on, all those documents are not numbered. Um, Your Lordship, with permission of the court, may I please have a look at the court's file? I just want to ascertain what is happening with that file. We see the problem. Um, the documents are upside down in the in my court file. Uh, unfortunately, your lordship. That's how you gave it to me. Yes, it is. We <laughs> we apologize to the court for that. Okay. okay, this is where it starts. Uh, I don't know if the court wants. No, let's, let's, let's proceed with it. Yeah, we will we'll sort it out. As it plays the court. Um, what is that document before you? Okay, the document before me is a founding of David. Made by Samson Tangeni Hatipuriku. And what is the source of that document? The source of the document is from the Magistrate Court of the District of Windu. Okay. If you can take us to page. 473, uh, but for the document itself, the type number is page 26, the one that is typed, paragraph 95. Paragraph 95, it reads, I do not know who owns Silax Investment or DHC Incorporated. What I know about it? is what is reported in the local press. However, I can confirm that, indeed, monies were paid into GTH Trading CC and Erongo Clearing and Forwarding CC from Silax Investments and DHC Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Okay, please just read for us into the record just that page. Paragraph 96. The said funds are the subject of a loan transaction between my cousin Hatui Kuripi and I. James and I would regularly loan each other monies and repay each other. Paragraph 97. During September 2017, James instructed Silax Investments to pay one million to my CC, GTH Trading, 
and a further 1 million to Erongo Clearing and Forwarding CC. These payments were made to me on the instructions of James after I borrowed him through his CC. Grey Guard, 500,000 Namibian dollars in March 2017. One million Namibian dollar in April 2017. And a further one million two hundred and fifty thousand Namibian dollar in August 2017. I made the payments through two of close corporations. I unfortunately do not have full access to my bank accounts. Bank incarcerated and can therefore not provide a full account of the funds loaned and repaid, but recall that we regularly loan each other funds. Page nine, uh, paragraph 98, I approached James for a loan in February 2018, whereby he instructed DHC Incorporated to pay me $2 million Namibian dollars. In March 2018, I refunded him 1.9 million from GTH Trading CC and paid it over to Grey Guard, which James designated. I at no point in time knew of the source of funds that was paid into the account of DHC Incorporated or Silax Investment. I earnestly believed that there was not, nothing unto it as James borrowed me the monies. I refer to the confirmatory affidavit of James Atuikulipi in this regard annexed here too. All right. And that particular affidavit, was it signed? The affidavit was signed by Mr. Thompson Tangeni Hatuikulipi. Okay. It's bearing a date September. It was signed on the 6th of July 2020. All right. Um, if we move on to the next page, what is depicted at that page? Page five seven. Uh, it's four seven nine at the top right, but the bottom number. Four seven. Just the next page after the signature. Four seven four. Four seven. Four seven nine. Yes. <clears throat> four seven nine. It's a confirmatory statement, confirmatory affidavit made by James Nependa Hatui Kulipi. Mm, and the source of this document? This document also came from the Magistral Court for the District of Windu. Mm -hmm. And was that document signed? The document was signed by James Nependa Hatui Kulipi on the 6th day of July 2020. Oh, okay. And what is the content of that document? The content of the document, it reads as follows. I, the undersigned James Nependa Hatui Kulipi, hereby declare under oath as follows. I am an adult male businessman, Namibian national, currently detained at Window Correctional Facility, I have read the founding affidavit of Thompson Tangeni Hatikulipi and confirmed the contents therein as far as it relates to me. Paragraph 3 I further confirm that Thompson Tangeni Hatikulipi and I entered into a loan and that I caused that first be paid to him or his nominated account by Marine de Klerk of DHC Incorporated and Silax Investments. Oh, okay. 
Um, your Lordship, there's a request for the affidavit of Mr. Thompson at Willipi and the affidavit, confirmatory affidavit of Mr. James at Willipi to be submitted as exhibits. Exhibit Z15A, uh, 15 Roman 1. Exhibit Z15 and Z15 Roman 1. All right, um, if you would take us to the next page, uh, page 70, going back where we were. Page 70. Okay, mm -hmm. the document on page 70 is an email from Sakeos Edward Shanghala of email address saki1 at icloud.com data 23 July 2018 sent to Maren at lowdhc.com and CC copied to Perpetua Jacobs at sga-na.com and James Hatwikulipi subject Kakwili Trust. Okay, the content of the document is read as follow. Paragraph 1, I discussed, as discussed, please set up a trust for me and my children to be beneficiaries. The assets in Omolo Trust will then be migrated or ceded from Omolo to Kakwiri. Ideally, you are the only trustee and you should appoint James Hatuikulipi in the event of your anti-mary demise to replace you. No. Or what? Uh, um. And you should appoint James Hatuikulipi in the event of your anti-mary demise to and replace timely. you. And timely. Yes. Thank you, my lord. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Angela. Uh, and what is the source of this document? This document, it was sourced from the Office of the District Prosecutor, Iceland. Okay. Your lordship, the state request for this document to be marked as an exhibit. Exhibit Z16. As it plays a court. All right. Um, at page 71, what do we have at that page in the source of that document? This document is a document that we received from Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. On the letterhead of Steel Fenter Associates. It's a document that was directed to the Honorable Minister, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Office of the Minister. With the subject, confirmation of third party quota granted through the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia Limited Fish Corps 
and approval of the amount remaining to be retained by FISHCO. All right, I think just for purposes of these proceedings, just take us through the first letter that is depicted there. Was that letter signed? The letter was signed on the 3rd of February 2017. Do you know who signed that letter? The letter was signed by Mr. Bernard Esau. Okay. Um, please take us to the content of that letter. The content reads as follows. In connection with the 30 September 2016 audit of Fishcon, we noted that Fishcon received Hague and host Macarel quota from your ministry on behalf of third parties and as well for governmental objectives. We understand that there was a verbal agreement between the Honorable Minister and the CEO of Fishcon that should there be any balance remaining from the proceeds of the third party quota, the balance should be retained by Fishcon. In light of this, we have drawn up a schedule with the total quota received by Fishcon on behalf of third parties, the total proceeds received by Fishcon from the quota, the amount paid over to the beneficiaries, as well as the balance still in the hands of Fishcon. The attached schedules have been summarized on the next page. Will the Honorable Minister or his representative please confirm whether Fishcon should retain, should retain the full balance or not? You can confirm directly to us, Steer Fente Associates Chartered Accountants, email bfente at svanam.com. The Honorable Minister agrees to the quantities of the quota shows as received by Fishcom on behalf of the of third parties. The Honorable Minister allows Fishcom and its subsidiaries to retain for their own benefit the balance of six million four four hundred and thirty six thousand nine hundred and sixty eight Namibian dollars. Above approved by the Honorable Minister or his representative. Oh, okay. And if you can take us to page seventy three of that document. Page 73, it contains tables, two tables. The one on top, it reads Hague Freezer, governmental objectives, various institutions. Okay. Um, can you inform us? with um, regard to the transaction of 8 July 2016 that is reflected there? The transaction of the 8 July, it indicates the company paid Wanakado investment, then in brackets, risk dry fish. The, se the next column, it indicates the amount paid, which is an amount of 4,199,000, $4,199,000, and 
995 Namibian dollars. And the next part. Then the next one is indicating the amount of metric tons, which was 1,000 metric tons. Then the beneficiary, other government objectives. The rate excluding VET is 4,200. The quarter value, value is four million two hundred thousand Namibian dollars. Then money retained in fiscal five dollar. Okay. Um, your lordship, there's a request for this confirmation of third party quarter letter to be submitted as an exhibit. A lot before. Maybe I also suggest on page 72. Okay, we'll, we'll. Okay, no, you can continue on that as well. On page 72, we are having a document which also came from the ministry. And on the under beneficiaries in the first column, there is a column, a line, a column on the line saying other governmental objectives, which is the beneficiaries. And on the quarter, it is indicating 1,000 metric ton. The column indicate proceeds and is an amount of four million two hundred thousand. The column indicating paid to the to beneficiary in Namibian dollars it indicate a payment of four four million one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five. Namibian dollars. And the retained by Fishcom in Namibian dollars is $5. Okay. Um, there where it says pay to beneficiary, that $4,199,995. Um, from your investigations, to whom was this amount paid? This amount was paid to Vanakadu Investment. Okay. Um, your Lordship, there's a request for the letter to be submitted as an exhibit. Exhibit Z17. As it plays the court. It's with all those attachments. As it plays the court. All right. If you can take us to page 78, just tell us. What is that document and the source of that document? This document is a document that we obtained from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources for the indicating the quotas sold by National Fishing Corporation LTD, which is Fishcom, for the fishing season 2015-2016. In the document, is seven columns. Um, at what page are you, 78? Page 78. I'm at page 78. Okay, all right. Okay, please continue. Okay, on page 
uh, this document is divided up in columns, which is indicating what first column say agreement date, the second column indicating company or vessel name, the next column indicating quarter type, the next column indicating rented, then the last three columns are falling under one heading, usage fees, which comprises of the rates, the amount excluding, and the invoice number. Okay. All right, just hold on. Um, I want you to have a look at the letter of 21 February 2018. Should be at page 79 of your bundles. The letter, page 29. Yes. Yes, I'm there. Okay. What is that document? It's a, a letter from Steel Fenty Associates, Chartered Accountants. Mm -hmm. Directed to the Honorable Minister, <coughs> Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Office of the Minister, with the subject confirmation of third party quota granted through the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia Limited, Fish Corps, and confirmation of beneficiaries. Oh, okay. Um, when was that? Was that letter signed? The letter was signed on the 21st of February 2018. Mm -hmm. Who signed that letter? It was signed by Mr. Bernard Esau. Oh, okay. Um, can you take us to page 81 of that letter? Page 81. 81. Yes. Yes, I'm there. Um, what is contained at that page? What is contained here is summary of the quota sold during 2016-2017 by National Fishing Corporation, LTD, which indicating the agreement date, the company vessel name, the quota type, the rented, and the usage fees. Okay. I think on this particular page, can you just highlight to us um, the company and the vessel names that were involved? The companies that were involved is Deep Sea Ocean Processors, Loki Investments, Mirmaria Seafood Namibia PTY LTD, and Career Investments 180 PTY LTD. Okay. And then if you can take us to page 83. What is depicted in that page? Page 83. Yes. Okay, what depicted? Your document may be perhaps is legible, but mine is completely not readable. Page 83. Is yours legible, Mr. Tangogan? Uh, it is a uh, little bit faint. It's difficult to read. 
Hay que entrar. No, please. We have the same difficulty in the mood. Yeah, perhaps, I don't know if my eyesight is better. Um, is it the eyesight or the document? I, I know it's the document, but maybe my eyesight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must accommodate all of us. Yeah. Okay, uh, Your I think we can come back to that at a later stage. Let's uh, just move on to page um, 84 of that document. Page 84 of the document. It's also a document that was obtained from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. For the quarter payments of 2016-2017, this quota are for horse mackerel species. The document. Uh, okay. Um, I just want to take us to the second column. That is, they just give us a details of what is written there. To the second table, it reads horse mackerel, governmental objectives, Swapo Party. Then it have the payment dates, the company paid, the amount, the metric tons, beneficiary. Where is the amount, Mr. Kanyangela? Mine she simply it's payment date, company paid, amount, but where is the amount? There's no amount. Okay. But right. the heading indicates oh, okay. an amount to be indicated. Mm -hmm. Metric tons, beneficiaries, rate excluding vet, quota value. Money retained in the fish code. Under that, under metric ton, there is indication of 15,800 metric tons and 3,000 metric tons. The beneficiary is indicated as Swapo Party for all the metric tons indicated. And it's an indication that they were sold to career investments and they paid directly to the beneficiary. Okay. Um, Your Lordship, there's a request for this letter to be submitted as an exhibit. And these attachments. Is it the letter? No? Yes, and the attachments which were accompanying them. That's exhibit 18. As it plays the court. Yeah, I think, yeah. It's out. Your Lordship, just excluding that page, which is not clearly legible, that is not an issue. Exhibit Z18. As it plays the court, Your Lordship. Um, at page 90, what do we have there? Page 90. It's a letter from Steel Fente Associate, Associates Chartered Accountants. It's a document received from Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources. A letter dated 29, 21 January 2019. Directed to the Honorable Minister 
Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Office of the Minister, with the subject confirmation of third party quota granted through the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia Limited, FISHCO, and confirmation of beneficiaries. Okay. Um, was that letter also signed? The letter was signed on the 23rd of January 2019 by Mr. Bernard Esso. All right. Um, at page 91, what is depicted at that page? Page 91 is the table, it's a document with columns. which is saving beneficiary quota proceeds in Namibian dollars paid to beneficiaries, Namibian dollars, underpaid, overpaid by fish pool in Namibian dollars. Oh, okay. Then this was for Hake Freezer and Hake Wet. So these quotas were related to hate. Okay. Now, insofar as this page is concerned, who are the beneficiaries? As far as this matter is concerned, Loki Investments is one of the beneficiaries. Where, 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 where do you get that? The under beneficiary. On which page are you? Page ninety one. Okay, all right, all right. Um, it just, just for record purposes, just indicate for us the beneficiary and the quota. Okay, the beneficiary in this matter is Loki Investments, which receives a quota of 3,000 metric ton, and Lalandi Holdings, PTY Ltd, receive an amount of 706 metric ton of Hague freezer, and also it receives an amount of 3,309 metric ton of Hague wet. Then, other governmental objectives receive 5,000 metric tons. And of Hague freezer, and 3,500 metric ton of Hague wet. And at the next page. The next page is for post material quotas, where we have governmental of governmental project allocated eighteen thousand metric ton and other governmental projects. At the bottom. At the bottom. Okay. Allocated 22,000 metric tons. Okay. Uh, we'll ship the state also request for this letter and this annex has to be marked as an exhibit. Is it 19? Yes, Your Lordship.
right, uh, can you go to the next page, page 99? Page 99? Yes. <coughs> Page 99. Uh, okay, before you proceed, I, I want to find out from you, apart from the investigations that were conducted in relation to the law firms, THC and Sisanamanje, were other investigations conducted in this particular case with regard to other entities? Okay, there, are, there was investigation conducted in respect of the Several agreements that were entered into with Novanam and Loki Investments. Some uh, were entered into through their subsidiaries. Which is deep, deep sea processor. Uh, skeleton cost roller. I think that was what I can recall at the moment. Oh, okay. And was evidence gathered in relation to these investigations? Yeah, with regard to this investigation, we approached the managers in these companies of Novanam and Loki Investments. They provide statements and documents to support their statements. Oh, okay. I just want you to have a look at a particular document. It's the witness statement. Lordship, we want to refer to the statement of Mr. Kamano. I'm not certain if the court is still in possession of that statement. Mr. Um, Kamano, Jose Kamano. It, it was an exhibit. Uh, no, Your Lordship, we just uh, made reference to it during cross-examination. Kamano, yes, I as, still have it. As it is the court. Um, what do you have before you, Mr. Kanyangela? Okay, this is an affidavit that was made by Mr. Jose Ramon Canosa Kamano, the general manager of Novanam, PTY Ltd, which was which was obtained from him. On the ninth day of December 2020, together with these statements, Mr. Jose, Carman, Jose Ramon Canosa Camano also provides attachments. Yeah, okay. Now, insofar as this statement is concerned, um, were you informed of the events that occurred with regard to the Novanam group of companies by this witness? 
in the first revision again? Um, were you in informed of the events that occurred with regard to the Novanam group of companies? Okay, what have transpired according to one of the managers he indicated that the approach Mr. Mike Nipunya for them to see whether they can get quotas from sea flower. Okay. Um, before you proceed, that version is it included in this statement? It is included. Oh, okay. Yeah, just to make things uh, move along, can you just take us to paragraph 22 of that statement? Paragraph 32. Uh, 22. 22. Mm. Paragraph 22 reads, over time, Novadam negotiated and agreed with Sea Flower to buy some of its water. I would normally be the person in Novanam who approached Sea Flower and negotiated on the conditions and price of the quota. These agreements were reported in writing and signed. Okay. And if we move on to paragraph 26, are those agreements summarized? Paragraph 26, it reads, the following quarter agreements are part of Novanam's documents that came to my attention and were concluded with sea flower as described during the period 2014 to 2019. I cannot recall the particular circumstances surrounding the negotiations or the signing of each specific agreement. Okay, I just want you to highlight for us um, the agreement, the metric terms, and during which fishing season in relation to these agreements. Okay. Under 26.1, this agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd. and Novanam Pty Ltd. for utilization of 1,200 metric tons of wet hike quota for the 2014-2015 fishing season. Okay, and the next agreement. The next agreement is 26.2 agreement between sea flower whitefish corporation ltd and novanam pty ltd for utilization of 450 metric tons of wet hike quota for the 2014 interim season 26.3 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd and Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 600 metric tons of hake freezer quota for the 2014-2015 season. Paragraph 26.4. Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd in Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 300 metric tons of Hague freezer quota for the 2014-2015 season. 26.5 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd in Novanam Pty Ltd 
for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of weight height quota for the 2014-2015 season. Agreement between sea flower is falling under 26.6. Agreement between sea flower white fish corporation LTD in Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 644 metric tons of egg freezer quota for the 2015-2016 season. 26.7 Agreement between Sea Flower White Fish Corporation Ltd and Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of weight head quota in 2016 and the transfer of 110 tons of head HNG from Novanam to Sea Flower. 26.8 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation LTD and Deep Ocean Processors PTY LTD for utilization of 2,000 metric tons of head freezer quota for the 2016-2017 season. 26.9 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation LTD and Deep Ocean Processors PTY LTD for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of high freezer quota for the 2016-2017 season. 26.10 Agreement between Sea Flower White Fish Corporation LTD and Deep Ocean Processors Pty Ltd for utilization of 3,000 metric tons of fish freezer quota for the 2017-2018 season. 26.11. Agreement between Sea Flower White Fish Corporation LTD and Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of egg freezer quota for the 2017-2018 season. Mm -hmm. 26.12 Agreement between Sea Flower White Fish Corporation Ltd and Deep Ocean Processors Pty Ltd for utilization of 2,000 metric tons of fake freezer quota for the 2018-2019 season. Paragraph 26.13 26.13 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd and Deep Ocean Processors Pty Ltd for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of high freezer quota for the 2018-2019 season. 26.14 Agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd and Deep Ocean Processors Pty Ltd for utilization of 500 metric tons of egg freezer quota for the 2018-2019 season. 26.15 Agreement between National Fishing Corporation of Namibia on behalf of Namibia Fish Consumption Promotion Trust and Novanam Pty Ltd for utilization of 1,000 metric tons of egg freezer quota for the 2019-2020 season. In paragraph 26.16, agreement between National Fishing Corporation of Namibia on behalf of Leaders Cryfish Festival Trust and Deep Ocean Processors Pty Ltd for utilization of 300 metric tons 
of fake freezer quota for the 2019-2020 season. Okay. Now, in relation to this particular statement, did this witness provide an explanation with regard to payments to third parties? Did the witness provide an explanation? In his explanation, is that contained in the statement? It is contained in the statement. Okay, what is contained there? Can you just indicate to us? From paragraph 27. Paragraph 27. Under payments to third party <coughs> entities, the arrangement with Seaflower had been that the entity holding the quota sold to us by Sea Flower would render its invoice to Novanam for payment of the quota price. Then paragraph 28, it reads, some time after we have been conducting business with, with Sea Flower, the exact date of which I cannot recall, Mr. Mike Nupunya discussed with me a change in the payment arrangements of the negotiated quota prices. Paragraph 29, Mr. Nupunya told me that there would be a new payment arrangement as follows. He would provide us with two invoices for the quota I understood that Seaflower would issue an invoice and another company would issue a second invoice. The combined total of the invoices would be equal in value of the quarter price we agreed on. Paragraph 30. These second invoices included invoices I received as issued from Wanakado Investment CC, Wanyemba Investment Trust, and Fine Seafood Investment Trust. Paragraph 31. Um, okay. Okay, yes, continue. Paragraph 31. Mr. Nipunya referred to the payments to the to third party entities as management fees, facilitation fees, and consultation fees. We did not discuss the rendering of any specific services by the third party entities to Novana. Paragraph 32. After this conversation, it became the method in which Seaflower negotiated with me the price of the quota. It was also the method Seaflower would invoice Novanam for the quota. I informed the Novanam management by the CEO and financial manager of the new system of payment when I received the first invoices. Paragraph 33, the third party entities did not render any services to Novanam as described in the invoices as maintenance fees, management fees, or vessel repairs and maintenance. My understanding was that payment to the third party entities was part of the negotiated cost of the quota and for Mr. Nipunya to facilitate getting the quota for Novanam. For that, Novanam paid a consultation fee. 
All right. And what is indicated at pay paragraph 40, page 12 of that statement? Paragraph? Um, 40. 40? Yes, page 12. Paragraph 40 of the statement, it reads as follows. During about November 2019, Mr. Nipunya called me about a consultancy service agreement. He had wanted Novanam to sign for consulting services he rendered to us. A copy of the agreement is attached here to and marked GR153 to GR160. Next page 41, paragraph 41. Mr. Nipunya told me that the agreement would offer him in Novanam a form of safety. Okay, and that paragraph 45. Paragraph 45. Wanyemba did not render to Novanam the services as described in paragraph 3 to 6 of the agreement during the period 2017 to 2019. These functions Novanam performs and managed, manages itself. All right. Now, in so far as your investigations are concerned in this particular case, um, did you obtain the agreements that were referred to between Novanam and the Seaflower Whitefish Corporation? We have obtained the agreements. Okay. What is they it? They were attached to the statement of Mr. Jose. All right. Do you have examples of those agreements in the bundle before you? Yes. All right. On which page? We have an agreement on page 99. Okay, the agreement on page 99 is an agreement between Sea Flower Whitefish Corporation Ltd. and Novadam Ltd in respect of the utilization of 1,200 metric tons of Hague wet quota for the 2014-2015 fishing season. All right. Um, if you can just take us to paragraph two of that. Mr. Lidiberti, yes, we have been in court since nine. Would, uh, I, you know, I, I remember now. Cancel with a coffee. Is, um, is, is, is in court. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. We will take a 15 20 minutes break until 20 past 11. As it is, as it is.